Welcome to The Back Porch. I'm Sweet Meg. I'm Ricky Alexander. Today we're here with one of our favorite drummers. He played on our latest CD, which is available now, I'm In Love Again. Kevin Dorn, he's also played with Bob Haggard, uh, Big Noise from Winnetka. He's played with the Jim Cullen Band in San Antonio. So Kevin, you're originally from New York. You must have played with a lot of uh, greats and people who have played with the greats in the 20s. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I was just very lucky because growing up here, when I got into jazz, I was around 14, and there were still so many musicians then around who had played with Louis Armstrong, Jelly Roll Morton. I got to see the last people who had played with Bix Beiderbecke. And I got to play with all the people who had played with all of my favorite drummers. So now it's not so easy to find people who played with Sid Catlett or Dave Tuff or Gene Krupa. But back then, there were a lot of them around. Where were some of the places like that that you would, like, where were, I don't know, back in that era? It's like, when, when was that? Around? So this would have been uh, mid-90s. So where were the places that, like, those, those kind of cats were playing? There was a place called The Cajun, mm -hmm. which was on 8th Avenue and 16th Street. Just a little restaurant. Most of these things, it, it wasn't a big deal, which was all also a nice thing like the greatest live music I ever saw in my life was really just people playing at restaurants yeah you know then it was funny because there was there was no one my age at that time in New York who was into that stuff and I spent my 20s mostly playing with people who were 40 to 60 years older than me oh. but because no one younger was into it I always had to try to convince these people that I really liked it like if they just saw a 20-year-old kid, they would just assume, well, this guy's not into this stuff. So I'd always have to try to say something, you know, drop a name or make a reference to somehow try to get them to realize, no, I really like this. And often it would take a while. Like, you really had to work for it. They were nice, but they weren't going to really let you in until they knew, okay, this person is serious. And some people could sort of never accept it. Like, I remember there was this great bass player, Eddie Jones, who played with Count Basie in the 50s. He's on a lot of great stuff. And he and I ended up on a gig together when I was maybe 20, first starting out. We were sitting together on a break, and he was kind of in this very common situation where he was saying, well, now obviously someone your age is not into this kind of music, but, you know, this is good. It's good to know the history. And I was trying to say, no, no, this is really what I like. And he said, you know, you young people don't care about the history of jazz, but you should know this stuff. And I kept trying to say, no, this is what I really want to do. And then he actually said, for example, someone your age, you wouldn't even know the name of one of the great New Orleans upright bass players in the beginning. And I said, you mean like Pops Foster? Thinking that, okay, now I'll have an in. But I said, you mean like Pops Foster? And he said, you see, you don't even know Pops Foster. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of that kind of stuff. <laughs>
you have really great time. Obviously, you're a drummer, but you have specifically very, very good time. What did you do? Is there a way that you know you worked on your drumming? You seem very deliberate. And, you must and, have a secret. Yeah. What's your secret? What did you do? How did you get well, there? Well, it's nice of you to say. I think my time is terrible. So of course you... <laughs> that's always been the thing that I've worked on the most, and that was the main thing that the older musicians impressed upon me. That was really the only thing they cared about, not just with drums, but with any instrument. Mm -hmm. That was really the main thing that mattered. The best thing that I did, there was a great drummer named John Von Olin, who, great big band drummer, he played with Woody Herman and Stan Kenton. Not exactly my kind of music, but just a great guru kind of guy. And I met him when I was in my early 20s, and I asked him about this, and he said, here's what you do rent a cabin in the woods and play for eight hours a day, but here's what you do. You don't play any exercises, you don't use a metronome, you don't do anything, just play random nonsense out of time, pretend you're like a three-year-old kid just randomly flailing away on the drums. Do that for eight hours a day for a month. And because I had such respect for this guy, and he just seemed like such, you know, a Yoda kind of guy, I thought, okay, I'll try it. So I was doing it, and I'm doing it for weeks in the woods, just kind of thinking this makes no for sense. Eight hours? You did? Eight hours, just nonsense, just random nonsense. But then what happened was, when you do something like that, you, there's no way you can mess up, because you're not trying to do anything. There's absolutely no way that you can make a mistake. So normally, we're always trying to do something. You know, you're trying to play in time or in tune or whatever it is, you're trying to do something. So whenever you're trying to do something, you, you're not maybe 100% relaxed. But when you do something like that, eventually, and for me, it took about three weeks in the woods of doing this eight hours a day, all of a sudden I felt for one of the first times in my life what it felt like to be completely relaxed on the drums, just in my body. And then the idea of it was once you get that feeling, it should feel the same way when you're playing in time. So then you'd kind of go back and forth. And if something doesn't, so maybe you're all loose, you're just messing around, it's loose, and then you go to play in time and all of a sudden it's like, it's like, okay, wait a second. Like, why did this happen? It should be the same. So that was a very counterintuitive thing because the whole, I mean, I wouldn't even call it an exercise, but the whole thing was playing out of time. But if I had to pick one thing that helped my time the most, it was that.